Good evening and welcome to Monday, September 28th, East China School District Regular Board of Education meeting. Um, let's get started by standing for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we get started, um, I do need a motion to make a change to the agenda. Um, we need to just delete item six, C, curriculum coordinator, and D, ECAA contract extension, because those are actually um, board action items this evening. So if somebody could um, please make a motion. So moved. Support. Any comments or questions? Okay, please, um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, so item six this evening will now be A, consumer's power lease agreement, B, extended con continuity of learning plan, and E, bond update. So the next item on our agenda is um, items of interest, recognition, and inquiry, Board of Education members. Does anybody have anything this evening? No? Okay, Mrs. Sibula? Yes, um, every chance I get, I just want to take the opportunity to thank all of the East China School District teams that are making every day happen here in East China. And um, some of those teams, I hope I don't miss anybody, but everyone from our noon aides to our pair pros, our bus drivers, teachers, principals, latchkey providers, every, everybody that makes a difference each day um, for East China schools. It isn't easy. Um, but they're doing a great job with it, and I and I appreciate that. So thank you. And I think that goes without saying that um, the entire board is very appreciative of everybody's hard work also. Thank you. Okay, so our next item is the Academic Spotlight, um, Palms Elementary. Mrs. Sibula, would you please introduce that this evening? Sure. Um, as um, President Frank stated, the spotlight this um, board meeting is on Palms Elementary. Scott Westerhoff, principal, put together the presentation regarding their welcoming their new technology class. All right, give me just a second. Good evening, Superintendent Saibula and school board members. Palms Elementary is so excited to be the opening act for the 2021 school year board presentation. We have to talk about the four C's tonight, collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinking in our new technology classes being offered here at Palms. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Stacy Schweighoffer, our technology teacher. Thank you. Hello, some of our students would like to share with you what they are learning in technology. Strategy. My team had to figure out a strategy to make the card stand. That I learned that you, with teamwork, you can have two people holding one thing steady while the other person pl places them on top so then it doesn't fall over that easily. Can you guys see the picture? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry guys, it's recorded, so I'm pausing for just a second. We're not seeing the picture on YouTube. We'd like to talk about the four C's tonight. Collaboration, communication, creativity, and critical thinking in our new technology classes being offered here at Palms. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Stacy Schweighoffer, our technology teacher. Thank you. Hello, some of our students would like to share with you what they are learning in technology. 
strategy. My team had to figure out a strategy to make the card stand. That I learned that you with teamwork you can have two people holding one thing steady while the other person pl places them on top so then it doesn't fall over that easily. Hi, my name is Sophia, and in technology class, I learned to be confident. Hi, my, my name is Michaela, and I learned in technology, as long as you work together, anything's possible. Whenever something seems impossible, you at least have to try it first. Just because you didn't always get the best grade on A+, plus doesn't mean um, it's not good that you tried. It's good to plan ahead. Teamwork is key. When you work together, you get things done faster. Our students were able to further practice their four C's, collaboration, communication, critical thinking, and creativity as they were programming and creating algorithms for the Dash and Dot robots. We were fortunate en enough to be able to borrow these robots from the St. Clair County RISA. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Okay, thank you. Um, our next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. A motion is needed for the approval, approval of minutes from our regular Board of Education meeting on August 24th, approval of payment of bills, the financial statement, schedule of investments, and the appointment of new teachers. So moved. Support. Any comments or questions? <clears throat> okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. Item number five is recognition of persons wishing to address the board. Um, as of the beginning of the meeting, we did not have any um, requests to speak this evening. So we will move on to our um, information discussion items. First off on that is consumers power lease agreement. And Mr. Kevin Schumacher is here. Um, we reached out to our attorneys um, through when we were looking at renewing the gas lease and they recommended that um, we contact Mr. Schumacher and his um, firm as they're the experts in this area. So welcome Mr. Schumacher. Can everybody hear me? I think I've got a mic on. Yep. Um, tell me how much information you want from me. I can tell you how I typically describe this to clients so that you can understand it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Okay. So basically, you have a natural gas storage field under 80 acres that is owned by the school district. And the way I usually describe this is think of your property as a layer cake, you know, like a three layer cake or a five layer cake. On one of those layers, it is particularly well suited for storing natural gas. So back in 1963, this storage field was developed by Consumers Energy, formerly known as Consumers Power Company. And the school district leased its property under a 50 year lease at $160 a year and then that lease actually expired in 2013. All right, so why did, it, why did we wait until 2019 to talk to somebody about it? Well, consumers uh, really should have a great inventory system to keep track of when their leases expire. And when I was first approached, it was by Gordy Van Weeren, who is the attorney for you folks over at Stroom. Uh, and he does normal you know, school district representation on a regular basis. 
and he reached out to me to say, Kevin, we've got an oil and gas situation that we haven't had to deal with in 50 years at the district. So can you tell us what our rights are? And so I went back and forth with Tina Thrift quite a bit uh, and basically wrote a very detailed opinion letter so that she would understand it, which I assume is uh, shared with the superintendent to explain, here are your rights. And basically what you have is like a layer cake or a Tupperware underground that contains natural gas. And you get to own that as, a, as one of the assets for the district. And the district's job is to uh, manage its properly effect, property effectively, efficiently, and economically. And consumers made a proposal of, hey, you know, we kind of dropped the ball and didn't renew our lease, and we'd like to just pretend like that didn't happen. And here's a new lease that we want you to sign that would pay you approximately $75,000 mm -hmm. over the next 100 years for us to keep doing what we've been doing. Uh, so I was approached to say, Kevin, do you think we can you know, what are our options under this situation? And you could actually have treated consumers like a trespasser. You know, we no longer have a lease, we're gonna throw you out. Um, and there are state laws that are in place that allow consumers to use condemnation authority in order to condemn the subterranean layer cake for storage of gas purposes. Um, there are benefits and detriments to doing that. Playing hardball with consumers is probably not advisable from a standpoint of school districts are oriented towards educating students as opposed to engaging in litigation to fight over property rights. Mm -hmm. um, my estimate would have been it would have been tens of thousands of dollars for litigation attorney fees that would have been fronted by the school district for an uncertain outcome. And the uncertainty is, is what are your storage rights actually worth? So to evaluate that, I retained a oil and gas engineer, who is a licensed professional engineer in Michigan, asked him what his experience was. I also contacted a landman who had a national land practice of buying and selling uh, rights like you have to find out is consumer lowballing, consumers lowballing the district. And actually the initial offer from consumers was higher than both of them estimated that it would have been, but our position with consumers at the time was such that we thought we could negotiate better terms. And that's what I ended up doing was trying to increase the frequency of the consumer's payments instead of once every 50 years you get a payment whenever consumers feels ready to make the payment to at the front end of each of four successive 25 year leases. And the terms, you know, in a nutshell, we increased the position of $75,000 was the initial offer. We're now at $122,500 plus consumers is going to pay for 7,000 or, you know, make a contribution towards your attorney fees. I haven't done my final billing, which I think is going to be a total of around $9,000, but consumers is going to pay for 7,500 of that. So over the next hundred years, the school district will get a payment every 25 years in advance of the next 25 year term. And I believe those terms are laid out in the board packet that you have at the very end. Um, and basically the first payment will be $27,500 for the first 25 years, 30,000 for the next, 30,000 for the next, and then 35,000 for the last 25 year period. Uh, the school district, you know, has this piece of property and if, if at any point in time, you know, 10 years, 20 years, you know, 50 years from now, if the district decided to sell the property, they could actually keep the storage rights beneath the property in order to keep that revenue stream coming or it could sell the property, you know, if that ever became something that the district had to consider. So signing this lease that, is something that, wouldn't, that, that wouldn't affect because I, I don't like the fact that we have it as an automatic extension so that wouldn't affect it if we decided you know with the contract if we decided to sell it in 15 years if you decided to sell it in 15 years you would you know this is sort of like having a lease of an apartment you know and if right. you're in the middle of a 25 year term anybody buying the property is going to be aware of this lease being you know part and parcel of of the property that they're buying so it will it has the potential to affect the value of the property but, you know, I can tell you consumers, you know, my estimation, my professional opinion is if you refuse to sign the lease, consumers is going to initiate condemnation proceedings against the school district to, 
you know, condemn the property for purposes of gas storage. Just the storage layer of the cake, not the surface of the property, other than the surface portions that they're already using right now. And I believe they have two two acre parcels within this 80 acres that they are actually using the surface on and have been using for the last 57 years now. So, you know, your options are either enter into a lease with consumers voluntarily on these terms or wait for consumers to sue the school district for condemnation to forcefully gain the rights to this property. Well, not that I'm, I'm against the, 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 how, how can, if they, if the lease is up, how can they sue us for not agreeing to another lease? They can, you know, it, this is the same concept as if, you know, we're trying to build a new freeway through the county or through, you know, the same power that uh, townships have or county road commissions have to build roads. Michigan has a statute that allows for utility companies like consumers to condemn property, to say we need this in the public interest. And the way they do that is they have to get a certificate of necessity first. And a certificate of necessity says, hey, we need this for the public good. <clears throat> and utilities are able to do that because a, a reliable natural gas supply for the heating of homes in Michigan or for the generation of electricity in Michigan is a public necessity. So the first thing that they do is they have to make a determination of public necessity. This would be in the probate court for the county in which the school building is actually located. They have to make that demonstration and they would... Uh-oh. Them. 15 years, I think it's pretty much a done deal that they would be able to establish necessity because it's actually part of their existing storage field right now. But the second part of it is the economic side of it. And the economic side is since we are going to you know, forcefully use the school district's storage capacity underneath this property, what value does that have? And the way you prove that is with engineers and with people who are in the industry of buying and selling land rights of this nature. And there's, a, there's an uncertainty to that, that would make it, you know, in my professional opinion, in the best interest of the school district to strike the best deal that you can, because this is something you have been, you've been receiving $160 a year for the last 50 years. We've increased the position that the school district is getting on that considerably. Thank you. Why, why 100 years? Why not do another 50? Uh, we tried and we couldn't get away with I believe that this this was um, the the Simcoe's counter was the was the 50 versus 100. We, we, so we lost it there for a minute, so I kind of just jumped in. The question was why 50 years instead of, I mean, why 100 years instead of another 50? They wanted 250s and we wanted to do 225s and they weren't they were not negotiating on those terms. If they go the condemnation route, they don't do terms at all. It's flat out, we hereby condemn the property and pay you a value for it. Okay. Um, one more question. Why are we hearing about it and voting on it on the same night? Usually don't we like wait a month? Right, Mr. Shoemaker, um, our board standard policy is that we have a discussion item one month and then the following month we'll um, vote on that item. But could you speak to the necessity of um, expediting this, please? Critical, but I can say that I've got consumers at the table now and we've gone back and forth. Everything that I did with consumers, I did tell them this is subject to the East China District board approval that they would have to vote on it. Uh, they know that tonight is one of the meetings. I don't know, I'm looking at the attendees and I don't know that I recognize anybody's name there from consumers. Uh, you're allowed to be the deliberative body that you are. My advice is when somebody makes an offer, it's on the table now, it can be withdrawn by them at any time. I'm not expecting that. Um, and, well, you know, kind of have to respect our power. So I'm not asking you to put all your faith in somebody who, who you've only seen. I can only tell you I've been working on this diligently with FEMA throughout the last eight to 12 months. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions. 
if you don't sign it tonight, but rather put it over to the next one and say, let's wait until then, I'm happy to answer more questions at the next meeting. Um, that adds more cost to you folks because, you know, I charge by the hour for my attendance at the meeting. And, and it's a big enough decision that, you know, I, I can understand anybody's hesitance hesitancy to vote on it on the same night as they're first being introduced to it. So um, I know you all take your responsibility seriously and don't, all I can tell you is when I have somebody at the table with a pen, I try to get a signature as quickly as possible. My recommendation is that this is a, uh, is a good offer by consumers. And the alternative is, is uncertainty for the district. All right, thank you. So they, they have to respect our policy. This is something that we, just like Karen said, we, we discuss and then we vote. Well, we've, we've done, we've made exceptions numerous occasions when things have come up before us and um, time is of the essence. So I think, um, I, I don't, I, I think Mr. Shoemaker's laid it out pretty, pretty clear that this is the final offer from consumers and it's kind of take it or leave it. So I don't, I don't know um, where we would go from here versus other than we just let them do us. And I don't really see where the district wants to get involved in, um, you know, that sort of a process. If so I can I, I agree, we can, we can vote tonight. I, I agree with that, but I, you know, I think that's just kind of disrespectful that they don't, uh, you know, want to agree to our policies. It, they're, they're not aware of your policy. Right. Oh, okay. I mean, they're not aware of your policy in, in terms of respect or disrespecting a board policy. They're, they're just simply, you know, ignorant to how the school district works. And, and, and real simply, you know, I've, I've got both sides of this that I can argue. On the one hand, consumers dropped the ball in 2013 and didn't renew the lease. Exactly. We would have had this conversation in 2013, 2019, or 2020. Um, what I'm recommending to the school district is, do you want to accept more money for something you've been doing for $160 a year for the last 50 years? Right. Um, I, I think we've beefed up the language of the lease as much as I possibly could. The state of Michigan, just so you understand, has similar properties to you where the state of Michigan owns parkland and has storage underneath their parklands. We use a variety of the state of Michigan lease and modified it slightly for our purposes. Um, so we are following very similarly to what the state of Michigan uses for their leases. Um, we don't have quite the same negotiating power that the state of Michigan does, so we didn't get all every single bell and whistle, but I asked for every single one and got as many as I could. Okay. So Do you know what that I, I can tell you my recommendation won't change between now and your next board meeting, and I don't think consumers is going to sue you between now and your next board meeting. But um, my, my simple answer is my recommendation is that uh, or, or the request that I would make is that somebody make a motion approving the contract, uh, authorizing the superintendent or the business office uh, personnel in charge to uh, to execute the agreement on, on behalf of the district. But that's my recommendation today. It'll be my recommendation at your next board meeting if you call me back for that. Is there is there any uh, potential cost um, or anything associated with? Like could could a cost arise from this property for any reason, or is this pretty much just the property sitting there and we'll get the money? There is no cost or obligation on your behalf. Everything that they do, consumers has to pay and cover. There's an indemnification. Uh, if you're looking at the PDF, paragraph L on page 25 of the board packet has got the indemnification. Um, we tried increasing that. In, we got some pushback, and so we left the same indemnification provision in there that's been in there since 1963. And that provision basically says any cost associated with consumers activity is going to be covered by consumers. Okay, thank you. So, I can't put in bigger pipe. Any other questions? I'm sorry, what? I, I said, are there any other questions? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm good. Okay, well, thank you very much, um, Mr. Schumacher, for um, joining us this evening. So we'll move on to our next um, information discussion item, which is our- hey, Jeannie, are we gonna come back to this in the action item? Sorry, are we gonna 
go ahead it, and make it, a motion. It's, on, it's in your agenda, 7A, unless the okay. board would like to go ahead and act on it now, which we can, but it is our our first action item. Well, okay, thanks. Jeannie? Yes. Why don't we just go ahead and, and vote on it now? Is that Jeff? We can. We absolutely can. Is he waiting for us? I mean, is he still on? He's still on. I don't know that he's waiting for us, but we, I mean, is everybody comfortable with that? We'll just. Yeah. Okay. So I have the action. Um, per administration and legal counsel's recommendation, the Board of Education approve and authorize signing of the presented lease with Consumer Powers for an initial primary term of 25 years plus three additional 25 year extensions, providing payments in the amount of 27,500. 30,000, 30,000, and 35,000, respectively. So a motion is needed. So moved. Support. Okay, are there any additional um, comments or questions? Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. No opposed. Okay, the motion carries. Again, Mr. Shoemaker, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. And when the minutes are prepared, you know, I'll just need a copy of the minutes is all. Sure. And I understand your minutes won't be approved until the next meeting, correct? Correct. All right, Mrs. Okay. Kronz, can you make a note of that, please? Thank you, folks. I'm going to get off the clock so that I can start stop building the uh, district. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, so we'll move on now to our bond update. Uh, do you want me to do the extended continuity of learning plan updates? Yeah, I, that. I apologize. Thank That's you. Okay. I have so many notes on here. Yes, please. The extended continuity continuity of learning plan update. I apologize. Sure. Oh, I did want to just make a uh, mention to thank uh, Mrs. Karen Cedar for her work on this and assisting with that. So thanks, Karen. We appreciate your time on that. Yes, I do as well. It's always nice. The more eyes that you get um, looking at these plans, the better that they will be. So the, the extended continuity of learning plan um, was a requirement of PA 149 uh, that uh, would waive us from the days and the traditional days and clock hours. So 1098 um, and the um, 180 days. The, by writing this extended continu continuity of learning plan, sorry, we are away from those traditional measures of attendance um, in, the, in our school days. If you remember back in March, we wrote a continuity of learning plan and every, it was new to everybody. And the, the state said in order for us to continue um, receiving our state aid through the end of last school year, we had to write a continuity of learning plan. Well, it was new, very new, and everybody was working from home at the time. Um, and we received great assistance from our RISA in getting our plan um, approved in March for the continuity of learning of that school year. This is um, an extension of that plan along with the um, COVID-19 preparedness and response plan that was approved in August and presented in August. So. We're getting um, a little bit um, more efficient at writing these continuity of learning plans. Um, everything is very fluid. Uh, the dates and requirements um, change frequently, but the plan that you received, um, the extended COVID-19 East China School District Learning Plan, outlines all of the steps we will be taking throughout this school year, including the assurances of what we will be providing as a school district to our students. But I wanted to um, bring to your attention with this extended continuity of learning plan that um, in this very fluid environment that we're all working in, initially the timeline was very short for when we had that. The reason it's on tonight's board meeting is it had to be posted by October 1st. Well, on Friday, um, uh, September 25th, not only did the governor um, um, have additional executive orders that were issued. We also got some changes to the extended continuity of learning plan. And I'll outline those now. So the new timeline for this plan is it needs to be submitted to our RISA um, by October 1st. 
RISA will then approve and submit it to the state by October 9th. And then we have to have it posted on our website by October 12th. So that was one of the changes that came out or the timeline changes that came out on Friday. So it gives us a little bit more time to review um, with RISA uh, uh, before they make the approval. The second thing that came out last Friday is there's language within this extended continuity of learning plan that talks about a two-way communication between teacher and student. And it's the new definition for attendance. Instead of the traditional attendance of you're your sitting in class and the teacher takes attendance, a two-way communication between the teacher and the, and the student is the, now the communication that um, qualifies for attendance. Initially, the communication could only be between the teacher and the student to qualify for the two-way interaction. As of Friday, they have added additional flexibility for those two-way communications, and it can now include another district employee besides the teacher who has responsibility for the student's learning, grade progression, or academic prog progress can participate in that two-two-way communication. So if a principal meets with a student um, and they, they talk about the, the learning in the classroom, that can count as a two-way communication. And we need two of those a week for each one of our students that will be reported on weekly and also um, reported at each board meeting, a regularly scheduled board meeting. Also, there was an additional assurance that's going to be added to the report that wasn't there as of Friday. Districts will now be required to report by January 15th, 2020, 2021 on the amount and type of training provided to teachers through professional development that was focused on delivering virtual content and also the type of um, instruction provided to parents and students on how to access virtual content. So we have, a, we have another assurance that needs to be included um, in the extended continuity of learning plan before it can be approved. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna just take a minute to thank our RISA for the, the help that they've offered in, in these plans. Everything from the goal setting to, to the, um, the assurances and how we were going to look at that and word that moving us through the school year, they were helpful with. And I wanna thank uh, Dr. Kevin Miller and his team for that help. But that is um, the extended continuity of learning plan. That is its purpose. And um, moving forward, starting in the October board meeting, uh, I will be providing an update on the, we'll call it the ECOL. Um, and that will include health department update attendance or that two-way interaction um, participation rate on a weekly basis. And uh, there was one more, I guess it was just the two-way interactions. So those three things, it'll be three slides that will be presented at each and every board meeting moving through this school year. Are there any questions about the ECOL that I can answer for you? Todd, you're on mute. Sorry. That's okay. Man, dang it. I can't read lips yet. <laughs> Good job. Can you repeat again the three things that would be on the slides that you just yes. said? Yes, it is the the um, health department update. Where to, so today in your board update, you receive, or you had attached, we have to provide the current health department data, the two, the attendance um, on a weekly basis percentage, and then the two two-way communications. Okay. Which we, I mean, it, it's new for us. All of this is new and how we track and how we look at um, attendance versus engagement or communication. Um, and we're, we're working on that. And Dawn Kranz has been extremely helpful with her knowledge and pupil accounting on, on, on those issues. Any other comments or questions? Pat, you're muted. It looks like you're trying to speak, but you're on mute. Look for the other button, not the video button, kiddo.
Do you know what she needs to do, Craig? Yeah, she keeps hitting the mute of the video, Pat. Look for the one with the microphone. Tap on the screen and look for the microphone. It should be red. Okay. There you go. There you are. Oh, okay. yeah. for God's sakes, this is ridiculous. Um, all, all I wanted to say, is it's no big deal, and I'm sorry to hold everybody up. I just wanted to say it sure is a fluid situation with the state because you never know what they're going to throw at you next. Um, it's more like a week-to-week -week thing, isn't it? Yes, it certainly feels that way. And with and unless it happened today and I didn't hear about it, the governor has yet to sign the budget. Um, so we're still unsure on that front as to um, – on what we're working with for the school year. Okay. Thanks for okay. having work. Anybody else? Okay, so then we'll move on now to bond update. Okay, so um, starting also in uh, the October regular board meeting, I will be, be providing a bond update. And this is a lot more exciting than providing <laughs> an extended <laughs> continuity of learning plan update. Um, but I provided the school board late this afternoon with the 2020 bond program series one project timeline. This is the most recent information regarding the projects and when the construction will begin um, and when it will be completed. Now we have two series. This is for the first series that includes um, the Innovation Center here at Meisner Road the 612 St. Clair campus and the 612 Marine City campus. Uh, the, the series two, which will be the work on our elementary buildings, the design for those projects will begin in early January, February of 2023 and to be completed in fall of 2024. So all projects should be completed in the fall of 2024. Wow. Yes. Can I answer any questions? So as of right now, we're in, have we completed the Innovation Center designs? We're still working on Innovation Center um, designs. The, um, we, we have a meeting each Thursday and Craig Headley has been um, instrumental in helping with these designs and where our new technology will be placed and um, it, the, each each Thursday we get it closer and closer. I mean, it, it looked uh, really good at our last Thursday's meeting, but we're still in the design phase. So then will we complete the Innovation Center de design phase before we move into the St. Clair 612 design phase or will those go on um, simultaneously? Simultaneously. Okay. So we're on board then to start that um, here in October. Correct, yes. Okay. Any other questions? I see stop. Is Todd trying to speak? Todd, you're on mute. <laughs> Dang it, I'm that guy. Sorry. I'm glad it's Todd and just not me. I, I always swore I would never be that guy and now I did it twice. Uh, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Have we have we done any more work as far as um, the use of the innovation centers? I know that was uh, you know something that originally we talked a lot about the schedule yeah. and and the classes that we would offer there. And is there any update on on that work? We yes, uh, about I want to say three weeks ago now we brought a, a team of teachers, Marine City and Saint Clair Middle and High School teachers, um, to Central Office and TMP and OC gave a presentation and talked about the, the physical buildings that we're looking at building, but then we broke the teachers into teams so we could talk about what was gonna happen in those buildings and how it was gonna happen. Because even though we're fortunate enough to be able to build these um, wonderful um, classrooms for our students, it's what happens in those classrooms that we want to pay attention to. And so the de design team from AUK and TMP were walking around um, with their notepads or their iPads, taking notes as the teachers were, were speaking so that they could understand how the function of the rooms were going to happen. 
Um, and that, again, it was so exciting and fun to be a part of those work sessions. Um, but yes, we will continue to do that and we'll do that with each of the projects and talk about what what is the purpose of, of this of this building and how are we going to use it to to educate our students. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay, so then we will move into our um, board action items this evening. A, we've already um, voted on. B is the appointment of our curriculum coordinator. And the recommended action is that the Board of Education approve the hiring of Michael Walling as curriculum coordinator of the East China School District, effective September 28, 2020. A motion is needed. So moved. Support. Any comments or questions? Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carries. The next um, action item is the ECAA contract extension. That recommended action is per the administration's recommendation, the Board of Education approves the contract extension agreement for the period of August 26, 2020 through December 31st, 2020 between the Board of Education of the East China School District and the East China Administrators Association. A motion is needed. So moved. Support. Do we have any comments or questions? Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Okay, so that motion also carries So that brings us to the end. The items for our next regular board meeting are going to be the audit and the East China Educational Foundation grant awards. Um, this evening's meeting was virtual, again, because of the Governor's Executive Order 2021-54. Um, that is that's due to expire, so we'll play it by ear as far as um, if we're going to have to be virtual again next month or not. Um, so thank you, everybody. And I guess with that, we're adjourned.